Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is one of my favorite guests of all time. He's the greatest to ever do it, eight-time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman. He's got a new book out, and we're here to talk about it. Welcome. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, man? Uh, you wrote Perfect. a book, Ronnie. You've done it all now. You've got a movie. Yep. You've got a book. You've got a supplement line. You won eight Olympias. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> What made you decide at this point in your in your life that it was time to write the book? I've been getting a lot of requests for it, so uh, it, I, I tried uh, like three or four years ago to do it, and uh, I mean, I, I I just didn't have uh, I didn't have enough time to uh, right. do all the editing. So I finally had some time because back, uh, three or four years ago I was deep uh, and broad and, and and traveling for the company. I was doing a lot a whole lot of traveling. Yeah. And it didn't allow me time to do all that editing. Mm -hmm. So this time, three years, three four years later, you know, the company is uh, doing real good, and I don't travel that much. Maybe once or twice a month, if that sometimes. So yeah. I really had a whole lot of time on my hand, and uh, it took uh, me about a good six months to get this thing completed and done. Because editing is no joke. <laughs> Did you write the whole thing yourself, all by yourself, no help? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of people don't know, but I'm a writer. You know, when I was in college, I wrote for the newspaper. I didn't know that. See, I'm always learning something new about you. Yeah, I started out as a writer, and then they uh, promoted me to an uh, editor. Wow. Like a editor, you know. So I was edit. I, I was writing stories at first, and then uh, the the editor he had he graduated. So they promoted me to editor, which is one of the hardest jobs I've ever had in my life. <laughs> oh yeah, because you got to take people like John Romano and you got to correct all their uh, their craziness that they write with, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but back in, back in those days, we had to put the paper together because we worked at a, it was a college newspaper. You had to lay it out. You actually had to lay it out physically, right? Yeah, that, that, yeah, there wasn't no, all this technology. So. Yeah, it was like big, big long <laughs> sheets. You had to like lay the, the articles out and clip them together. You know, like, you know exactly what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, my father ran the school newspaper, and he was an English teacher, so I know I used to see him do it at home. It was hard. I mean, I, I had to have a lot of help doing all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it, it took me a long time to get that down. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a lot of experience with this. and So when you sat down to write a book, because, you know, I, I've been trying to write a book, a diet book, and I can't, I can't find the time, and I, and, I, and I have trouble getting started. How did you actually sit down and do it, and how did you organize your thoughts, and and when you would, when you were sitting down to do this, what was your idea that would you know say to yourself, you know, this book is different than all the other ones out there? Well, I, I, I'm pretty much going by my story. You know, I, I was doing uh, things that you know other people hadn't done. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, being eight time Olympia, and then uh, all the uh, drama with the police department, you know. Yeah. And all the stuff that happened along the way, you know, all the, all the stories from yeah. uh, crazy things I saw working at working that job for 15 years, and and then uh, being in the sport of bodybuilding for about almost 20 years, and winning eight Olympias in my you know my climb, and you know I I I, I got a history that goes way back, you know, from my my elementary days to my junior high days mm -hmm. to my uh, high school days to my college days. So I had a lot to talk about. So the book ended up being almost 200 some pages. Yeah, I bet your publisher sent me a copy of it. It's called Yeah, Buddy. It's available now. I know people can buy it through you if they want to, and you'll actually sign the book, right? Yeah, I've been, man, I've been knee deep in signing books for the last three, <laughs> four years. Every time I make a post, <laughs> I'll get about, you know, almost a thousand entries on the book. Wow, and, you know, that's awesome, Ronnie. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot, and it takes about three days just to go through all that, and then another three or four days to sit down and sign all those books. Do you personally personalize them, or you just sign your name to it? No, I personalize them because wow. everybody okay. emailing me what to write. You know, that's great. I mean, I I I think you're crazy to do it. To be honest with you, but uh, I, you love your I, fans. I kind of got in a little bit over my head. Cause some of the, <laughs> we got to find of, someone who's a good forger who could do your signature for you, you know? Put well, I don't think it, I, I, it's a lot of work. I, <laughs> I think you're about, crazy, right? Personalizing every book to these people? You should be charging $100 a book to do that. 
Uh, I, it's close to something like that. <laughs> oh, it is? Okay, all right, all right. At least you're making money off of it. As long as you're making money, you can. Do, that's fine. Yeah, some of these people want you to write a whole, I uh, know. A, a whole, whole nother book. Look, guys, if you're going to buy Ronnie's book, <laughs> limit it to eight words. Can you eight yeah, yeah, words? Exactly. You pick your eight words, Ronnie will do it and he'll sign his name. Don't give him a whole paragraph to write. He doesn't have time to do it. You know I've got that. You know yeah. I've got that. <laughs> now, it is, bro, bro, it's I got. I want my autograph copy. All you got to do is sign mine. You don't have to write anything to me. I want my. I got the PDF though, and I read a couple. Cha- I didn't read the whole thing. I got to be honest with you. I didn't have time because I got it a couple days ago. But you know, it's, on, man. it's very honest. The book. I'll tell you that it's a very honest uh, approach to your life, and I think it's always hard to write about yourself honestly because we want to make ourselves out to be. Something that we're, you know, we want to make ourselves out to be important, and it's hard to write about things that don't go right in your life. Was that yeah. difficult for you to sit down and write some of those chapters where you weren't so successful? You know? No, no, no. Because once you get there, ain't nothing in the world like being there. <laughs> right. Yeah, nothing but is it hard to go back and talk about, you know, this when you when you you know you were the pizza delivery guy, and when you know people no. weren't maybe giving you the respect that you, you deserved? Not really, because those were some good days for me. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing that stuff, you know, uh, delivering those pieces to all those different people and <laughs> throwing those papers and what, having to do all that kind of stuff. What was your you best know? tip you ever got as a pizza delivery guy? Oh, man, that's been so long ago. I, I got some pretty good tips, you know. Oh. I, I can't remember exactly what they were giving me, but <laughs> some, of them, some of them were pretty good. How big were your arms when you were delivering pizzas? Uh, they were 22. <laughs> Did, what, would, what would people say to you when they see you delivering pizzas at 22-inch arms? Uh, most, most of them were so hungry that they didn't mean they, they didn't even know. care, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ronnie and I were talking off camera. You know, he's like, he, Ronnie's going to be in Dubai at the Dubai Muscle Classic. RX Muscle will be there. Sid will be covering for me. Uh, I was telling him, you know, I have a newborn, and you know, Ronnie has a lot of young kids in his house too. And there's a, it's tough, you know, to, to to write a book, to do your appearances, to run your company, and you have kids running all over the place. Plus, you're dealing with, you know, your, your back rehab. By the way, how is that going? How's the rehab uh, process? Uh, it's, it's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. but well, where are me. you at? What's what's uh, yeah. where are you at? This, this well, uh, I went to the doctor. I, I was having some pain in my back. I went to the doctor to find out I had another herniated disc. So it's, Are you it's kidding in, me? Another one? Another one. You don't but need it's to. A, it's in my <coughs> thoracic. Wow. Are you going to need surgery on that? Yeah, well, I haven't gone to the doctor yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I can stay away from the doctors. Does it yeah. hurt? Yeah, this is uh, actually very painful. Oh shoot! But, uh, they gave me some uh, medication for it, so that that's working real good. Yeah. Then wh- let me ask you a question: Why do the doctors think you're getting new injuries? Now I can understand the old ones, but is it is it a compensation thing because of the way you're walking now because of the other injuries? It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because all, all all my discs have herniated now. All of them? Yeah. All wow. Of them. Oh my god. Yeah, that that thoracic one was the last one. Ugh. And you know, on my neck also. You need a, um, you know what you need? You need, They need to make a bionic uh, Terminator like uh, endoskeleton for you. Replace Man, Replace I'd, do anything, I'd do anything for something like that that yeah. would actually. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> probably by, by the time you, our kids are, uh, are grown up, they'll probably have something like that, I'm sure. Exactly. But. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. But so what? So Ronnie. So what? I mean, wh- where are you at in terms of like you know? I got the the boss on the line here, but I got I got to hang up on her. Yeah. Um, where are you at in terms of like in terms of functionality in the gym? Are you able to train better? Do you feel stronger, or is it is this new injury you know kind of bringing you back or a little bit backwards a little bit? No, I'm I'm still about the same as far as training goes, but it it it, it didn't really affect me that hardly any at all. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. I, I also went to the doctor uh, yesterday because my hip was bothering me. So that cup that's in there that's holding it together, it's, it's worn out. So they're saying they, they, they need to replace that. The hip replacement now is worn out? Yeah. How old is that? Uh, five years. Oh. I no, did it in 20, 2014. Wow. I was complaining to Honda about my minivan not working, and, and I'm pissed off that they can't fix the thing. 
you should really be pissed off, man. You got you got some defective uh, uh, hardware inside of you. What's going? On? Five years? It should last twenty years, right? Yeah, he told me at least a decade. Right. But so, what are they going to do? Are they going to replace it, Ron? Yeah, yeah. He said it only take about twenty minutes, though. Oh, oh, oh! So they're, they're just replacing what the cup? The cup, yeah. Mm-hmm. My God! Yeah. Now is that a, is that a fo- rear entry or is that a an anterior entry uh, operation? Uh, no, they, you know they go they go in from the side. The side, okay. Because I know and, uh, I know nowadays they'll do the front entry. They say it's a lot. It's it's uh, the recovery's quicker on that. Oh really? Yeah. I, maybe they'll probably just want to go through the same incision they use. That's probably why they're going to do that. Yeah, and uh, he, he's not going to put the he, he's going to take the uh, I got titanium right now. Right. Gonna put a, like a hard plastic one in there because they put that titanium in there because I weighed two seventy at the time. Right now, yeah. now I'm only two thirty. So, <laughs> is plastic supposed to last longer? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. There you go. Yeah, okay. It's last long. My God, oh, this, it's not all that metal rubbing against rubbing up against the uh, oh, plastic. Yeah, yeah. Now you, when you go to Dubai on an airplane, Ronnie, I mean, is it? Uh, are you comfortable sitting in those seats, or is it a bad? Is it a bad experience for you on a flight like that? No, it's very comfortable because you know I'm, I'm in uh, first class and I, I get the chance to sleep, you know, on right. all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's very comfortable. Okay, I have so no. You're, so you, you can sit. It doesn't bother you. It's not like you're uh, uncomfortable squirming around the whole trip. No, 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 nothing like that. Right. And what about the what about the operation they did previous? The, the, with, the, when they fi- finally fixed what was wrong, you know, they kept breaking. Is that screw? Has that been holding out? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. holding up. So right. far, so good. When you no wrote problem. the book, I I, I switched doctor. Yeah, I remember you told me that you fired the other guy. That was <laughs> smart. Now let's go back to the book because the book is is really what I'm interested in. When you wrote the book. What was the most difficult chapter that you that you felt that uh, that took you the longest to put down on paper, and why? What, what was it? You know what? Uh, I guess because I'm 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 a I'm a writer, and I really uh, truly uh, enjoy doing it. I didn't run into any, any difficulty. The, the whole thing was, you know, kind of easy for me to do, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So. There was no problem whatsoever. So you never hit like a writer's block. How you know? How am I going to write about this? You know what? Uh, there had to be some you know emotionally tough situations that you had to put down on paper. I would imagine that those are more difficult than talking about how you won the Olympia, which is obviously you know that's fun. You know. Yeah, to be honest with you, I, I really didn't struggle at all with none of that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. you know I've experienced most of the stuff. Uh, I've gotten over it, not had any problem with it. Right. Right. What do you think is the chapter that people will like the most? Like, what do you, like, what do you, when you read it, like, you get inspired. Which chapter do you feel that that would be? Uh, I think it, it all depends on what, what people, what people like, you know. I got, you know, a lot of stuff in there. But when I worked at the police department, I got some good stories in there. I like them. I, I read some of those. They're good. Very good. And then, uh, uh, I got, you know, stories about me working for Domino's. Uh, yeah, that's a good tip. Uh, uh, when I first I grew up uh, working and stuff. When you had to write about, you know, your I guess entrance Tell into me. the IFBB pro ranks. Oh, right Ronnie's, Ronnie's got the the president's calling him. Donald Trump's I'm, on the phone. You want to talk? Yeah, tell him to come on in. <laughs> when you eight time Mr. Olympia, you can answer phone calls. You know, in the middle of interviews. Ronnie, when you won the Mr. Olympia for the first time. I, I, I feel that that's the most poignant chapter because you finally were validated for all the hard work that you had put in for so long that, that no one really acknowledged up until that point. I mean, you were a great bodybuilder before winning the Olympia, but I think that Olympia where you beat Flex in 98 finally solidified and validated all the sacrifice that you had made up until that point. I have to imagine that that was a very an emotional point in your a very emotionally tough point in your life to 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 talk about because it was like finally people get it I'm I'm good you know yeah uh, tell him to come on in I'm I'm, I'm busy right now <laughs> <laughs> we he he's cutting in on on the on our emotional uh, emotional situation 
No, like, always, really, oh, right. What was it? Was that tough to... Always something going on with me, you know? I can't catch a break for nothing, it seemed like. Yeah. And when people... When you were finally won that Olympia and you fell to your knees, Ronnie, and you prayed to God and thanked God for, for the victory, I mean, that had to be a, the pinnacle. Was that one of the highlights of your life? Oh, easily, easily, by far. Uh, you, it, it was so great. I can't even. Uh, I can't even describe it to people. You know, I, I was, you know, so overwhelmed that I never ever even dreamed about winning the Olympia. So, uh, man, yeah, it, it, it's by far the greatest moment moment of my life, and and there's nothing that could top that. Not nothing whatsoever. There's no high, right? There's no high out there that you could possibly get that would be higher than that, I would imagine, right? Oh, no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Although you did it seven more times, which, which, which doesn't hurt. You know, that, I'm sure that felt pretty good, too. What's that? You did it seven more times, so you had seven oh, more was, validations of, of, no, of nothing, being the best. Nothing, nothing was greater than the first one. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah. Whatsoever. I'll always, I, you know, I was there in person. I remember I saw you fall to your knee. It was like almost like you, you lost all control of your body. You're, you're, you're just everything just dropped out from you, and you, you fell to the ground. I don't think you even lowered yourself. You kind of fell. You know, yep. it was like the wind was knocked out of you almost. Yep, yep. And I didn't even remember what happened until I watched it on video. <laughs> Flex I had didn't... to actually lift you off the ground. No, Vicky actually came on stage and, and Oh, she's me the up. one who picked you up? I know Flex was trying to grab Flex, you, but I don't think Flex, you were even responding to him. Flex came over and said something in my ear, but yeah. I didn't I didn't, you know, I didn't hear him. <laughs> I didn't know what he said. And I saw Chris came over and said something, you know, yeah. and uh I don't I didn't hear what he said either. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear nothing. I don't remember too much of nothing after right. after Flex was called for second. Right, right. Now, when you when you uh, post your you know competitive career, you start Ronnie Coleman's signature series with uh, Brendan. You guys yep. have a very successful company. You know, you, you make a good yep. living for yourself now. Uh, it's a very solid company. You have good products. Um, yeah. Wh wh which you get more gratification out of? Because this is something you can do for a very long time. You've been validated. You go to these shows. People, you know, you sit there. You sign pictures. You here's my products. I, you know, I'm almost more proud of, of the products that I make than of what I accomplished in bodybuilding because it's something I can give back to everyone. Do you, do you feel that way about your, your supplements? Uh, yep, because uh, they work so good. And I've uh, had this company for so long. And uh, every year that we've had it, it it's increased in sales. Does that, does that blow your mind that people are still so Ronnie Coleman obsessed, you know? With everything you do? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine, you know, being this successful, what, how many years after I last won my last Olympia? About 11 years ago? Yeah. It's a long time. It's over a decade. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, more longer than that. So, 05 was the last one I won, you know. And this is, what, 2019? Yeah. Uh, I still have some pretty long lines when I go to appearances. People, people love to hear what you're going to say next. I, I, you know, I don't follow anyone's Instagram. I, I have subscribed to them, but I, I always look at yours because there's always some kind of like Ronnie Coleman wisdom on, on there. That you're, it, it, it's simplistic wisdom. It's like not like you're writing very deep stuff. You're writing stuff that, that resonates with, with the average person, and I think that's why they relate to you so well. Even when you're down on your luck and you, and you have an injury or something like that, you always say something that seems to inspire people. Does, does, I mean, do you try to do that, or is that just the, you know, does that just come out of you naturally? Yeah, that's just naturally. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a gift. That's a gift you have, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Is that, the, uh, is that the next Mr. Olympia in the background there we're seeing? <laughs> I don't see it. You see somebody in the background? Yeah, I think one of your kids just popped his head in or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Over your right shoulder. No, I was just kidding. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, you never know. I can say, I remember. I saw him. Would you, <laughs> if your kids wanted to get into bodybuilding, would you would you inspire them to do that? Yeah, yeah if it's what they want to do. But they, they, they do, I, you know, I got all girls, so. Yeah, I, well, that's and all right. Maybe they, they can be Miss uh, Physique Olympia, you know? 
Yeah, they're not, they're not, they're not interested in that. <laughs> they, they got good genetics. You never know. When they grow up, they might change their mind, you know? Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> I, I worry about my kid because I'm afraid my, kid, my kids are going to want to go into bodybuilding, and then I'm going to be like, oh, I really don't want them to. But, you know, you got to... Whatever your kids are passionate about, that's what you have to kind of support them on. I, I, I understand that, you know? Yeah. Um, right now, I, I got all mine in uh, figure skating. Oh, really? Wow. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Are they good? Yep. Yep. They all, pretty, they all get first place in their competition. Wow. Well, you yep. should put that on your... Do you put those uh, videos on your Instagram? Every now and then, I, put, I might put one up. Yeah, put one up. I think the fans would love to see that. I, I, put, I put a few up already. Wow, I'm gonna. I gotta go check it out. I haven't seen them. That's cool. Figure skating. How did how did they get involved with that? You're in Texas. Is that like a uh, big thing? Uh, well, we, there, there's a big uh, rink in the uh, mall. Right. My wife took the kids to, to the mall when she was like two or three. Right. She walked over there and just stared at them and said, "I want to do that." <laughs> really. And then uh, the, the the oldest one, yeah. Uh huh. She started, then the younger didn't, then, then one after that, they all, you know, went in one by one. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love it. It's so different, right? Yep. <laughs> so, so much different. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you go to the competitions and watch and stuff like that? Yeah, some of them I get a chance to go to, but a lot of times I'm out of town. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got, you know, prior commitments and stuff, sure, so sure. I miss out on a lot, too. I, well, I try least... to go when I'm here. I, I always go when I'm here, when yeah. I'm here but... A lot of times I'm out of town, you know. Good thing is everything's videotaped nowadays with the phones. You can see every. You can they can text yeah. you the, the video in three seconds and you can watch it. So yeah, yeah, that's that's what normally happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ronnie, yeah. if people want to get the book customized, signed by you, how do they go about doing that? I had I've been having people email me at uh, cmrolympia at aol dot com. Okay, you're like me. You still have an AOL yeah. email. I love it. It's, it's just Mr. Olympia with a C in front of it. Okay. See Mr. Olympia at AOL.com. And you, oh, how much does the book cost if you autograph it? Uh, I've been charging uh, 70 Okay. But I have to, uh, you know, I put it in a couple of padded envelopes and stuff and right. make it real nice and, you know, ship it out uh, prior to mail so they nice. get it in like three. So, you know, I do, I do a good job of putting it together. No, that's very nice that you, that you take the time to do that. I Believe me, I, I think it's a great service. I mean, who wouldn't want to have an, an autographed, personally autographed copy of the Ronnie Coleman Yeah Buddy book, The Story of Your Life? And yeah. uh, this is a great opportunity. And if people don't want to get it autographed by you, they can probably go out. Go to Amazon.com and buy it? Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, Amazon.com. Okay, very good. Ronnie, I hope your, uh, your back works out good. Uh, Sid will see you in Dubai, we'll, so we'll be order, uh, interviewing you over there. Have a safe flight, and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Oh, you too, Dave. All right, eight-time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman, with the new book, Yeah, Buddy. Check it out. Email him, check out Amazon. It's available all over. I'm Dave Palumbo with another edition of Live With. We'll see you next time. <laughs>